Hey friends, we're learning C-sharp. We have learned about language integrated query. We learned about types. We learned of types of T, like a list of T. Of int. Of int. Uh, we've learned about some of the intrinsic or internal basic types that are involved. Uh, David, we just finished looking at a list of integers. That was a list of scores. And we did a query over those scores. But I'm starting to realize that this doesn't feel object oriented. That's right. We did primitive types like strings, ints, decimals, doubles, floats. But sometimes you want to make your own types. Right. right. Sometimes you want to make your own types. And those type might be something like people. Yep. Or pets. Or people who have pets. Yep. And people have characteristics. And then suddenly you start, start modeling the world with object orientation. And that's what object orientation means. It's like, well, a library has books. And books have pages. And then you start questioning yourself, how much do I have to have the objects reflect reality? Right. It's a little bit overwhelming. Let's, let's do a little bit of object-oriented programming right now, because yep. we haven't done those keywords yet. Now, you made the comment before, David, that I could say console.writeLine, and that is a full application right there. It doesn't yep. have anything around it. But we haven't talked about namespaces and classes and some of the implicit things that are happening around console.writeLine. Around this is some stuff that we can't see, like we're using some things that the system makes available to us. And we might have a namespace called my program, and then I'm going to have a little bit of curly braces around it. And then with that, that, within that, I might have a public class called my app is here. Maybe this is actually my namespace instead of my program. And then within this is going to be a main function. We haven't talked too much about functions. We've only been calling methods or functions. And then it is only with inside that that console.write line shows up. What's all this goop. goop around here for, man? Why do I need all of this? It's structure. So C sharp at its core is object oriented, which means um, you declare, you describe the world in, in, with, with objects. Those objects have methods and they have state. And you can mutate the state of that object through these methods or, or through this like kind of strong contract. So we had strings and we called string.trim. String is, is an object and trim is a method on that object. That is how we model the entire world, right? Okay. In C sharp. So string.trim meant I have a string, it's a string of characters, I want to trim those off. Right. You said we want to model the world. So if I had a cat, cat dot make noise might meow. Exactly. And cat dot feed or okay. exactly. And that's totally up to me. I can decide those things. And Correct. They, they're not right or wrong. They're just my expression of how I choose to model the world exactly. and objects. And then these brackets here, the namespace and the names of the classes, that's all scoping. Block scoping, right? We learned it for the for loops and the while loops and the ifs. You're declaring your namespace to be this universe. Mm -hmm. And this is just a way to segment, segment your code into different um, conceptual um, compartments, right? So. My namespace is, you know, my my. It might be Fowler dot yeah, people, exactly. And I might be Hanselman dot people. Right. And they're different. They're people. different people. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So then the namespace and, and the name of the class kind of determine the overall name of my object. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you find older C sharp code, you might find that your program dot cs looks like this. The class is called program, probably. Right. It might yeah. say public class program and. This is the front door. It's the, what's called the entry, entry point. Entry point. That's right. And again, this here, if I delete all of this, that'll still run because it's going to generate all of that for me. That's right. But if I want control, then I do it myself. Does it matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. No. But I want people to know that because we're going to start making classes elsewhere. So we'll stay like this because this is a good style and it works, but we're going to give ourselves a little. We're going to do it at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our hello, object oriented programming, or oop. 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 Okay, so how do we start thinking about the world? Like, what, are we going to model some people? Yes, yeah, so let, let's, let's think about some domain like, like people with pets. Okay, so people have pets. Right. And people have characteristics like birthday, uh, maybe first name, last name, yep. you know, or given name, surname, depending on you know, how you roll. Exactly. And we saw before when we typed a four, we had these snippets that pop out. These are snippets. Let's see if there's one because there's a class. 
So when I make a class of stuff, I'm really just kind of making a, I'm drawing a dotted line around them. I'm putting them in a box and I'm saying those things are related. First name, last name, birth date, that's a person. Right, it's called encapsulation. So you're hiding the details of your person object and you own that as the author. And then you give customers or, or consumers of your class a point of view of what you wanted to see. Right. Right. So we can say class person, putting up brackets around it like that. It's your scope. So that right. I've scoped it. So now there's a thing. I just invented a thing called person. Yep. Whatever I want to call it. And uh, maybe I could say they have a uh, first name. Yep. And I said it's public because I want it to be available. I want the first name to be available, and I could say public to the class. You can control visibility because you might have a secret private class that you only use for your own reasons. Right. And we could say public string last name. And now we've talked about integers. We've talked about strings. We could say a date time, and I could say birthday. Or you can use the new type called date only because birthdays have no time. Oh, birthdays. Well, it depends on whether a birthday has a time. So I actually <laughs> was born, born on a 207 a.m. I was there. I got it. But you're right. I could say date time or I could say date only. And this is about modeling the domain. So you're trying to represent you know, birth dates, last names, yep. and you pick the best type to model your your um, data. Right. And you're pushing back saying, well, hang on a second. Your birthday doesn't have a time. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. What matters is how I'm going to use it. Right. Does it have a time for what we're for doing? For what you're doing, here? yep. And a date time in C Sharp would be midnight if I didn't give it an actual time. So then I'd be Correct. carrying all these midnights around for no reason. Exactly. I also want to point out that the dev kit is showing us this little extra piece of text that we did not type. I did not type zero references. That's just there to tell you is anyone using that thing? Right now, no one's using people or persons, okay? Now, is that, is that good enough? Is that a good way to start? It's a good way to start. Okay. What is this game popping up? We always see these little quick fixes sometimes. It'll say, declare types in namespaces. That is the best practice. Yeah, so I well, could have a namespace around this called right. my application. My company, my application, my mm -hmm. business, whatever. Right, but for the purposes of what we're doing, we'll leave that alone. That's right. But I could have, you know, um, I don't know, work.person or personal.person. Like you can, namespaces are arbitrary spaces. That's right. Doesn't matter for what we're doing here. Okay. Now, these are called member fields. That's right? right. So these are fields. And if I go and say to someone, make a new person, can we make some new people? Yeah, we can new up. Can we new we up can some new people? Up a person. That's so right. So var p yep. equals new person. Yep. And then I can go like this. And inside here, it knows that people have these three things. That's right. And I could say, first name, Scott, last name, Hanselman, birth date. And then here, I have to say, new date only. And then within that, year, month, day. So we'll pick Remember a. Born, Scott? I'm, not gonna up. Tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Is he going to put his birthday? No, no. I'm not telling you my birthday. Sorry, I don't know you like that. Okay. And then because we know that white space doesn't matter, we can do and put these around like this. We got person one. And then we'll make another person. Before you meet too many people, I should, I should tell you. Um, oh, yeah. It's not the best practice of, your, of OOP to expose your internal state to the outside world. Okay, so let's phrase that differently. So David just said, it's not a good practice to expose your internal state to the outside world. And this right. is a, a part about OOP that I never liked the way they taught it in schools. Yep. It gets people messed up for hours. It does. But we have 10 minute long videos. We do. <laughs> so how do we fix three, four years of bad computer science lessons yeah. and explain it? I think what you wanna do is you wanna control how your object is created. Mm. So you want to have a constructor that is the input to how someone creates your object. Yep. And you want to, for our purposes, I want to say that person is also immutable. We learned that term before. Right. Unchangeable. Unchangeable. So yep. you can only change the person's first name, last name, and birth date once. That's you a great can, point. Right. Because you're saying that if we have first name and last name and birthday just hanging off the people, 
people can change their names whenever they want. They can exactly. change their birthdays whenever they want. You might want to be able to let them change their names. Right. But you probably don't want them changing their birthdays unless it's a mistake. Right. In a very controlled way. So you want to be able to control mutations or changes to your yep. object. Right. And another thing to think about on the what they can see versus what's going on, the analogy that I like to use is what's on the menu doesn't reflect what's in the kitchen. I love it. There may be some weird stuff happening in the kitchen, but the menu is the public face the public facing, of yeah. what you're doing. That's good. And you know, you might say jambalaya on the menu, who knows what's in the jambalaya in the back of the room? I don't care. Right. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in just a second here. So you said a constructor? That's right. So, so you want to... Like? That's um, the right way of doing it in, in um, C Sharp before 12. I'll show you the new, new okay. way eventually. Yep, that's good. The only. I'm just saying BD. Yep. And you're going to set the, you want to change those, field, those um, public fields yeah. to be private. So now we're closing the door. Yeah, so no one should change your kitchen. state besides you. Change, closing the door of the kitchen. When people make a person, they're going to take that first name and they're going to say first name is first and last name is last. Now, this seems very repetitive yeah. and it makes me sad. I'm already a little sad here. So then I would go back up here and I would make my people differently. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going up here and making people in a different way. It's a little cleaner. But no. I dig it. No one can take your person object that, that was declared and change arbitrary parts of, you know, first name, last name. I'm going to say you're younger. I'm, I'm not, 86, what? Good Lord. Before that. <laughs> so crazy. I okay. want to rip this. So here, the way we would say this is we have two instances yep. of the person object and one declaration of a person. And you can see also now these numbers have been updating, updating themselves. We can see how many people how many, when I say people, I mean how many uh, parts of our code that's right. have referred to that. We have two references to that. And that's useful for finding out if there's code that's not being used. Yep. Okay. Very good point. Now, is there anything I do to make this prettier? Because that seems a little hairy. Let's make it a bit more modern. Um, we can convert this class to use a primary constructor. Okay. So let's see if we see any code fixes here. So it says primary constructor and remove fields. Let's do that. Are you for real? That's pretty awesome. Oh my goodness. Is this going to mess up everything? <laughs> Ooh, that was beautiful. Okay. All right. So hang on here. That entire class went away. So if you've been doing any coding before, previously, or you've taken some classes, you have this, this over and over and over again. Stuff that goes into the constructor, then it gets copied into private backing variables or yep. members, internal members. All of that can be gone away. All of that can be hidden from us. This is uh, a refactoring that we were able to do. Away. Okay. Yep. So we're going to do, do that refactoring here. And that refactoring in person. Try hit enter again. Hit enter. Again. Just, yeah. Sorry. Edit, edit point. <laughs> right here. And that refactoring, I can hit use primary constructor, which would change it on keep the fields, or I can remove them entirely. Yep. Now, I might want to make these better name now. So one thing you might want to do here is this is a class, and this is a primary constructor, which is a new feature in C Sharp 12. Okay. You aren't exposing any way to get the, the, the members mm. to the outside world. So right so, now, you've, you've, you've basically controlled how people can construct your object, your person object, but you haven't given, given them a way to read the information. So I want to make properties. That's right. Okay, and there's a snippet called prop that I can say, and I could make three of them. So right. I could have a string first, and maybe I'll be official and I'll have a capital F. Yeah. And we'll have a string last. And then we'll have a date only called birthday. And, and you now, can assign those. These gets and sets, how do I get those in there? You leave how those. How do I assign those? So you, you want to get rid of the, the get because this is, is going to be set only. No one can change name still. Well, I want to get first. Yeah, so the get stays. 
Okay, so I get right. So I'm not allowing no anyone to change them. That's right. No one can change your your your, okay. your state. So how do I get these things into those things? Right. Do um, equals first name on the yep on the edge of that. Not not in the get. Nope. On the very last line. The very. Oh, all the yep, way down. All here? the way. Yep. Equals first name. Yep. Equals last name equals birthday. So now uh, we have a primary constructor, and you're ex you're controlling the public fields being exposed to the outside world. Um, this is a pretty clean class. Okay. So then the question is, and I'm guessing here mm -hmm. because we're going to put it all together before we take a break. Can I say list of person? Yeah. And I could say var people equals new you list can, of person. You can do it even cleaner. What's that? You can do list of person equal people people equals open square bracket p1 comma p2 no way yep look at that perfect how clean is that yeah so we're adding these people right here and i could certainly move them down into here if i wanted to so now we have a list of people and i bet you i could then say console.write line people dot count and if this all works i'll have two yep We'll know if we have two people. Let's take a look. .NET run. Hello, oop. Two. Nice. All right. Look at that. We have it right there on the screen. We have about 10 or 11 lines of code with a little bit of white space. We've got person classes first, last birthday. We put them into a list of people. That's really nice. Nice. Basics of OOP. We are having a blast learning about C Sharp. We're going to take a quick break and come back and dig a little bit more into object-oriented programming in C Sharp.